Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. This is a fabulous week for the Juicy Scoopers because I have Brandy and Julie here, the dynamic duo, woman strong. (laughs) Welcome (laughs) to Juicy Scoop. (laughs) Doing it for themselves. Hashtag ladies together. We support women like Lisa Barlow. Yes, you you do. You know why I think you like Lisa Barlow? Because you kind of look like you could be her sister. Um, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> well, it's it's totally true. That is why you like her. We're going to get into all of that. But I have to tell you about my evening last night because you guys are going to get wet. Uh, can I mean, we get a pee pad in here <laughs> to put on the pink velvet chairs? I went to Kathy Hilton's holiday party for DirecTV and it was so many Bravo celebrities, so many fun people. Gore- I, we're at the gorgeous house, all of it. Um, Can I say writing last, about last it. time we were here, Kyle was there too. You yeah. said, "I'm I'm going to see if I can go to Kathy Hilton's holiday party," and you did. That's right. I don't know how. Uh, it's called manifesting. <laughs> manifesting. It's called secreting. And <laughs> you know, Kathy, who uh, follows me, she commented when I revealed the the latest of the con and the earrings being from mm-hmm. Revolve. And if you don't know about that, whatever, <laughs> go join my Patreon because I'm not going to spend time on here talking about it. But she um, wrote a really nice comment and got like a thousand likes. It was like the truth will always come out yes. or something such yes, as. Yes, exactly. So I love her. She's known me for years. We did get invited to a party, Peter and I, when it was just a regular holiday party with super rich people from Beverly Hills just scooping up caviar like it was guac. Oh. And I remember seeing a big chunk of it fall on this guy's <laughs> velvet shoe. It was a loafer. velvet loafer and it <laughs> fell on it. And it was just like, I was like, I am in heaven. Anyway, I made it back and it was so fun. And to get ready... A lot of people go, Heather, how do you get ready? You do your own hair and makeup. Everybody else had professional hair and makeup. Everybody had a pony. Everybody had the bun with the two splits, you know, but Mm -hmm. I only have one good side, so I have to have a side part. (laughs) But one way I do make my side look good is I use this Bloomy. (laughs) This is Blooming right here. I love this. I've talked about it, you guys. And I do this before I do my makeup. But you can even do it with makeup on. I put my serum and it lifts and so contours you the, my jawline. So you put the serum first. Yes, I do that. And it just really gets in there. You really only have to do about three minutes. You can do it every night. You can do it right before something. You can go mm. a little longer if you want. But I feel like the job gets done in three minutes. So um, I'm going to demonstrate just half my face so you can just see. Is it tightening? It's tightening. Uh, there's different ones that will like clean your pores. I like the red because the red is for the tightening and the firming. And I don't know. I don't think I have that dirty of pores. But anyway, no. I love it for like underneath the eye like this, kind of lifting. If you have a little bit of hooded eye, you could actually change your hooded eye. I have you seen you roll your face eye. with things. So this I believe even, 100% that you're sitting This is even better. There doing it. And right now, this is normally $150. <laughs> and right now, it's $79. And it's only for the first 100 people. After that, it sells out. And you got to wait till I do it again. Because it is such an in-demand item. It's such a great price. And remember, if you don't see the results and you don't like it, you can return it and you can get your money back. And you're just going to click, click on the link in the description below, blooming.com slash juicy scoop. And you're going to get this. Like I said, offer was originally $150. Now it's only $79. Does it charge like in the wall? It feels nice. Is it like a massage? No, it charges. It, it charges right right okay. here, and I've never had to recharge it. Wow, it I've great. had it now for like a couple months. So anyway. That's nice. Look gorgeous. Nice. Feels nice. Mm-hmm. Satisfying. I like the <clears> sound. <throat> I like the feeling. Okay. So here I am. I made this face at Peter because nobody wanted to talk to me on the red carpet. And I was <laughs> standing in between Meredith Marks oh. 
and Mayor and Mary, the the preacher from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Oh. And there, that's Teddy. She was interviewing um, Larsa Pippen. She did not want to interview me. Oh. And that's fine. That's fine. Is so it? as I was waiting, Kelty from Lady Gang, which she also works for um, E! News, and I like her a lot. She's like, wait, don't. I want to talk to you, you know? So then I'm just standing between two other people being interviewed and no one wanting to talk to me. But at least Peter was there to get some fun Are you telling content. me that you... Walked by, yes, brutalized my families in front of you, <laughs> yes, yes. And Teddy Mellencamp has the audacity. You're saying she doesn't want to speak no, to you. She was busy talking to other people. I, I talked to her after. You know, I I was. I do <laughs> not there. need Teddy Mellencamp to be a, 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 an enemy of mine. It is fine. I'm not a housewife. Um, it is okay. She looked cute. She had a little red suit on, and hey, she was she's working. working the she event, was honey. working for extra, so she's doing her thing. And uh -huh. Meredith Marks was there, and um, <laughs> and I introduced uh, Peter to um, Seth, and I said, you know, they have a podcast called Hanging by Thread and everything. And I go, we've been married almost as long as you. And he goes, the whole time, or you took a break like us, you know, because they had like a sabbatical. Right. Mm -hmm. A sexual sabbatical is what I like to talk about. I go, no, it's been the same. But I have been pushing for something to happen in society, which I think would be a great idea. Much like the Mormons go for a two-year mission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People who are married for, you know, for a long time, anywhere between seven and 15 years, you have a two-year sexual sabbatical. Where and, you fuck half of New York. Yes. And then everybody does their own thing. But you know that after two years, no matter how many people you've recruited or fucked, <laughs> you're going to come back to the marital home. And so there's no risk or anything. I don't want to do it anymore. I've missed the window. Okay. I don't want <laughs> to meet any new people. But I'm saying for other people, <laughs> if it was something that society accepted, like something you do, mm -hmm. like a passage of life, a passage of marriage, maybe more marriage was would stay because like them, he's like, I'm so glad we didn't miss that. I'm so glad we did it that way, but I am happy we're back together now. I mean, it, I will say and I thought that was nice that he said that. It does seem to have worked for them. I don't know if I'm falling for the banana and the tailpipe with their relationship, but they do seem like they're back into it. How, wait, I, banana and a tailpipe, please explain. That's a Beverly Hills Cop 1 reference. Okay. Where I'm not going to fall for the banana and the tailpipe trick. But it's, what is the trick? I don't get it. You put a banana in a tailpipe. And then they... You can't start the car? Yeah. And then the, they can't follow you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Now, do we think... I feel like they kind of seem like they're back in love. They were having fun at this party. Um, I didn't get that much time to talk to Meredith. Um, but <laughs> the caviar was there. The Meredith <clears throat> Marks caviar was there being served on small potatoes which you know that's the way Kathy Hilton yes. likes to have her caviar on a little potato. Or a large potato. Yes. <laughs> With lots of sour Yes, cream. which I would have been <sighs> down for. I, I mean, um, Heather, your The good life. news is there was not a lot of food there. And we didn't mm. arrive until 8, because that's when we were told to be coming around that time. And I thought there would be a lot of food, but, you know, it was a cocktail party, which is fine. So what's good is I have another event tonight, and last night I only had one deviled egg. Oh, like a half of a little deviled egg. Did it have caviar on it? No, but it did have a delicious like candied bacon topper. Mm. Well, was that this, was all I had besides a drink. It's neat how you pretend you don't have any friends facetiously, <laughs> but yes, yet are I'm at a different event. Joking. Yeah, a different I'm clearly, event. clearly joking when I say that. And I have a very full <laughs> life, as does <laughs> Meredith Marks. So anyway, as I was walking through, this other girl said, I do want to talk to you. And next to me was... Um, Angie, wait, let me get to that, was Angie and um, Whitney mm, okay. from Whitney Rose. And I've interviewed Whitney, and Angie was super nice. Dark-haired, new Angie. Very, very nice. Say, it's neat how you were actually with them last night, but Julie and I were watching them on TV. <laughs> <laughs> We was, were. That's neat. Yeah. Like, we're like, Heather, can you believe Whitney is mad? And she's like, let me ask her. She's like, let me have my <laughs> let me talk to her for a minute. Yeah. Hold on. I'm, gonna, I'm eating a deviled egg <laughs> now. On. Wait, Angie's here. Hold on. <laughs> I'll get back to you. So then I basically joined their interview. And <laughs> then the girl asked me, what is the, what is this, what, wait, you know, what's the one thing you want to know about in the Bravo history world? 
you know, and hmm. the two girls are like, you know, whatever they say is going to get them in trouble, right? It's going to haunt them for the next two years. And I said, I can answer this. When did Vicky know that Brooks didn't oh, have cancer? Was it before she went to Staples and made the binder or was it after? <laughs> I want to know. If I was terminal, I would say, can Vicky just tell me that? Just she can come in the room, just the two of us and tell me because I just want to know when she was like, fuck. Yeah, it's like the I, don't think they pl- I definitely don't think she planned about. it with him. But I think she discovered it at one point and then was like, what the fuck do I do? Mm. And I, that is what I want to know. And then the other thing I was about to say is where the fuck is Mary's uh, husband? Con- con- husband, congregants or whatever you call it. Mm. And but I decided not to. Thank God she was right next to me. Oh. Mary was there. <laughs> Mary was I'd there. I'd love to know that. I'd love to know if they shut her church down or what. And then Angie, uh, later on in the night, she goes, I need to find Mary because I, I'm her plus one. I go, what? Where? I go, you stayed in the same room? She goes, no, we're staying in different hotels. But she invited me like, that's how she got in. Anyway, I like Angie. We're going to hang out. Mm, yeah. yeah. Nice. yeah. I'm actually shocked that Kathy invited Mary Cosby but not Angie. Well, listen, this was a big event through DirecTV and I love DirecTV and they're streaming now and it's great. So I think it wasn't like, I don't know that it was like her personal list. I think they're like, we're going to invite a bunch of housewives. We're going to invite a bunch of influencers. Mm. And, you know, of who, do, who do you especially want? Is there something you, but you don't want? That's probably the extent of it. And she probably was like, who cares? Oh, that's why we didn't. She has a big, huge, fancy <laughs> yeah. house. And she was at her house with all the Christmas trees. With everything. And oh. I took lots of video. I'll be putting a reel together. Mm. The decorations were to die. There were pink trees, white trees, real frosted oh, trees. God. There were old-fashioned, like, you know, old-fashioned decoration. Like, yeah. You know, like like where you looked on a thing and you're like, this is the heirloom from the, you know, from <laughs> like the Hilton. Problematic times. Yes. Like now, a Victorian I do, doll. I do, I do Here want to I encourage Go Heather, on. your listeners, yes. to... Go to Architectural Digest. It's it's AD oh, on yes. YouTube. Kathy has not even at Christmas time. She's going through her home with the seventeen holiday trees. It is Chef's kiss. <laughs> this is what you saw last night. There's yeah. a tree in every room. Oh yeah, no, it's all her stuff. Yeah, and she allowed you know this this fabulous party oh. happen. So you walk in and there's trees and there's an opportunity to take other like a a photo thing which I didn't have time to do. Then you go in one room, the, the dining room, which is where the Moe champagne vending machine is, but it's free. Ugh. Ugh. Little individual model, like what the models do. Okay. Then you go downstairs, and then that is the big room with the DJ, and there was a charcuterie board and some apps and stuff, and a bar, and then another room with a bar. Then you go outside, and there was a bar, and then there was a Casamigos Mm, place mm. and then there was uh, Meredith Marks caviar on the potatoes and just beautiful beautiful places to talk and speak now one thing I realize as you see you see the little pigs coming out of my sh- feet so I'm yeah. with Emily and Heather Debro, and both Emily and I from OC we talked after being outside for an hour and I wasn't like cold like because I had long sleeves on this dress was like a red velvet off the shoulder yeah, which beautiful. I wore already to a wedding so yes I know you know, that's that's how real I am. Anyway, yeah, that's you're so down to earth. I'm so down to earth. <laughs> and and I said, oh, my gosh, if I get invited to any more Christmas parties that are remotely outside in California, I'm going boots, mm. tights. I need my feet covered. You cannot go to an out. And a lot of Christmas parties in L.A. area are still outside. Mm. And you've got to prepare your little foot for those. You can you can literally have your shoulders out if your feet are covered with yes. winter socks. Honestly, and however it works to do that, you can be like in a tank top on the top. But right. It's all about your feet. It's and your about head. the toes because all of a sudden they yeah. start to freeze. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so talk to Heather Dubro, and I said, Heather, I reached out to you. Clearly, something happened. Why you're not responding? But that's okay. <laughs> we talked about our kids. You know, because I went to the groundbreaking party many years ago with her. And I said, I don't know, you know, but I loved you on this past season. I really felt you got beaten up. I felt you were such a target of everyone being jealous and you could not do right. And I said, and now that you have your place in L.A., I would love to see you on Beverly Hills. And I've talked a lot about it. What's the is that possible? 
And she did the very classy Heather Dubrow. Dubrow I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> wow. Do Heathers have a special bond? I think she bond? would be great. I Heather? think she. You, I, yes, I like her, and I and it, when touching her, I touched her core, and my God, hard, tight. hard, tight core. <laughs> what about Heather Gay? Does she fit into the Heather? I like bond? Heather Gay. Yeah, I like Heather Gay. I think she's a good time. We hung out one night in Park City, and I think she's a good time. When I look at this photo, what I want to imagine, and I will for myself, yes, is that, and if you can't see it, please go to YouTube. I want to imagine everyone talking shit about Jeff Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me though that's just me carry on there were some moments <laughs> there were some moments i'm sure we all uh, had great you know i really like emily a lot she looked great she brought a friend and i talked about that i love seeing her daughter on the show because that girl is as is an aspiring actress and she does she is a little ham and she likes it yeah. So when there's kids like that that I feel are benefiting from being on it and want to be on it, I really, I really like that for them. Okay. Then I saw my girl, oh. Crystal, the nicest. And I said to her husband, I go, you know, your wife is my favorite Beverly Hills housewife. You know why? Because she's actually an 818 till you die. She's a valley girl. Mm. Do you guys know that? Mm -mm. I didn't Went know. to Chaminade High School. Oh. A co-ed Catholic high school. And when she came to do my show, she did not validate because she's real cheap. <laughs> She's real. She's all about a deal. She likes a Groupon. She parked in uh, an area that you can not even have to put a quarter <laughs> in. To take an Uber. <laughs> and then she was like, I'm going to in and out on my way home. Now, listen, like, she is a real what, girl. One of my Sounds best good. friends yeah. who hooked me up with this Fendi, her daughter goes to Chaminade. Oh. So we love a shaman. But moment. right now, you guys, um, Brandy <laughs> is wearing rich bitch lady for the fall. <laughs> yes. She has a real Fendi shawl on that's quite stunning and timeless. Thank you. Okay. Um, here I am with Kathy. Oh, with the and we got to take a photo with her tequila. And I told her that at my live shows last year, we did a taster between hers and uh, 818. And she did always predominantly every time win mm -hmm. did they reenact the aspen we did not you know i know but that's she the was, bar she, gave, she was yeah she was giving every oh you're right that is the bar they reenacted oh, it. i didn't even realize that that that's what it was about that's cute yeah she gave everybody attention and everything but i always feel like even if someone is my friend and they're the hostess of a big party i want to say how i want to get my photo but i don't want to monopolize yeah but she was like no heather come take a photo and everything she looks great um so by the way here is Sheena Shea oh. looking absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Now, Sheena and I, we can remain real friends because we both have a good side and it's not the same side. <laughs> right. And we know so that and we do pose. that. Yes. And <clears throat> then she has a nice ass. So then I tried to push out my not ni nice ass. Mm. And she had a long green gown on and she looked fabulous. And we love know, Sheena. It's always she fun. Great. Always fun to talk to her. And then here's James Kennedy, <laughs> who has a much better jawline than Matt Reif. And his is, oh, in Reif. my opinion, completely natural. Matt Reif. James looks great. Looks James great. is killing it. He is going to be at the Marquee this Saturday night in Vegas. We saw him at the VIP at BravoCon with you. He d always a delight. Always. Always a delight, always. a dapper dude, and funny as fuck. You guys look great. You're both in nuts. Uh, a velvet. version of velvet. It's a wonderful photo. Yeah, he had a great outfit on. Look at him. Okay, then I had to talk to Katie. Looking great. Look her. Look at her purse. No, she it's looks a great. Nice big ball. Mm. And I love that she has her hair like that. It looks so good because she has a perfect face. Yeah, she looks she has great. A short hair looks great. And did you know that um, Ariana got a perfect score? On her later Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> no. No, she got all 10. perfect score. Wow, 10 She's 10, definitely going to have to win, I think. Wow. Anyway, the sandwich shop, the reason the, <laughs> the sandwich shop, it's all about the freaking permits and West Hollywood. And that is all true. That is so true. The, is it off? I don't know. I think they've had moments where they could, but it's not like an everyday opening thing. It still um, isn't everyday open because they're still fighting the city to have the sandwich shop. Oh. Okay, um, here I am with Whitney Rose and Angie. Angie's body. I is thought that was Jessica Simpson, Heather. <laughs> Whitney Rose. Yes. Yes. Look at that. Pretend it's Jessica Simpson in your own mind. She looked. She looked. Yes. yes. And they both look gorgeous. And um, Angie's body is ridiculous. Yeah. Very. But she's tiny. She had very platform shoes on. But anyway, you know. What I'm do not, you think? She's five two. 
Yeah, she's probably a little bit tiny. Anyway, they are both very nice, and you know, I'm gonna. She, I can't believe Jessica Simpson. I think went I'm to gonna hang out with guys. Angie. <laughs> she's coming. She's coming out to the desert because her daughter is an equestrian. Oh. That's perfect. That's I mean, is this just not? Wow. I'm making plans. I mean, <laughs> God, the haters must be just banging their head <laughs> against the. Car. Please don't get in a car accident, people. Please. I mean, the uh, okay. Uh, finally, yes. I'm imagining yes. that's me. <laughs> finally, there's Julie. She finally, made it to the party. There's a photo was... with Sheena, myself, <laughs> Whitney, and Angie, and then this guy. I don't know who he is, but he's cute, and that is who. Um, uh, that is I like Julie's outfit. identifying with most. <laughs> yes, I like his outfit. Because sometimes at these events, I'm always like, I would feel, I always feel so uncomfortable. But you, now, wouldn't have, finally, you would not have felt uncomfortable. Oh, everyone was it. so nice. Everyone knew each other. Nick so Vial fun. and his uh, very pregnant fiance were there and looking adorable. Okay. Um, so then let's talk about Real Housewives. Wait, was Heather Gay not there? Heather Gay was not there. Oh. Well, do you think there was a rhyme or reason to which SLC housewives? No, attempt? I think sometimes it's it's the it, sometimes it's PR. Sometimes it's you knew the right person. Sometimes it's that you got invited and it just didn't make sense to fly out there. I mean, they all had to fly out, get a hotel. Right. They all have kids. You know what mm. I mean? It's like there's other reasons why I would maybe you sell don't go. my home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. It's Kathy Hilton. You the know what? level was Paris there? We'll see how loyal you are this year. <laughs> and maybe next year I can squeeze your asses in there. I mean, yeah. um, okay. So let's talk about Real House of Salt Lake City. So there's a new girl named Monica. That's pretty entertaining to watch. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you're not watching the shows, I'm going to fill you in because I'm just going to talk about the juicy stuff. We don't like recap the whole episode. But Monica got in there. She has a strange relationship with her mother. <laughs> And we don't know why the mother left her at a friend's house while she pursued <laughs> something in New York. I highly doubt she was working for IBM. I don't know if she's trying to be an actress. I don't know if she left for a man, but she said she left for work. And therefore, Monica and her mom don't have a good relationship. Monica's divorced with four kids. And the divorce happened because she had an affair with her husband's sister's husband. So her brother-in-law through marriage, um, which is probably not great for the former husband and his sister's relationship. Probably Heather, we've not. met your brother-in-law. And we have. And I feel like I do like Monica, but I also do feel that sleeping with your brother-in-law <laughs> is very, very, very intense on the list of Bad up things, things you yeah. can do in life. I mean, that's it is really, so really intense. bad because you're not just. It almost would be better if she fucked her husband's brother because better. then that would just be all with that one family. Because now you're just into but a look. Now you've screwed up the brother's relationship with his sister, and then you've screwed mm. up the sister's relationship with her husband. husband and her family, and then to quadruple it, you go on a show and you get on the show because you're so honest about it. Yeah. And then you're like, I have a scarlet letter and no one cares about him. I know, but like th that family has kids. And look, I like Monica. I'd like to have her on the show because I'd like to ask her about this. And like, I like that she's being honest. But at the same time, I'm like, but she also needs a job. Okay. Right. Because the mom has control over her Range Rover. And the mom <laughs> mm -hmm. can go over there in the middle of the night, get in, hop in it and drive it away. And then she has no way of getting her kids to school. So yeah. it's a very weird relationship. But we do like Monica because she okay. did say, who's Jeff? Oh, <laughs> she said, who's that? Is he even on Bravo? And then the resounding answer was, no, he isn't. <laughs> I love it. So Monica, so they go, last week they go and they have a nice fun day that Heather Gay puts together where they're going to go outside and they're, and which is weird because even Whitney was like, yeah, it was kind of weird that my cousin left Mormonism, yet she has a party where we do like a more a couple Mormon old fashioned Mormon crafts make these little weird dolls that look like little weird voodoo dolls that look like a tissue doll or something, and then also we put on these bonnets and we shake, um, you know, we shake uh, butter until it becomes for six minutes until it becomes no cream until it becomes butter, which of course all the gay producers loved that that yeah. oh, okay these girls are gonna do this and a lot of them kept doing it you know and like and anyway. they made jokes about it like you you know you've all done this for more than six minutes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know you have right like they just love they just love over it. and over again just like who hasn't done this right like okay I got and then yeah. they did something that Brandy you love and pointed mm -hmm. It out uh, 
is always a new thing that the the Housewives franchise is being forced to do um, to get a fight going. Because otherwise, why did we all come out here and pay for a bartender and, you know, you know, wear our Fendi clothes? Now, so, I did try to find. Yes. For I watched the episode of the butter. Churning. Jerking off for like <laughs> uh, we <laughs> Julie jerking. and I just watched it like a couple days ago. Okay. So I only had two days, but I did try to find us bonnets and it was not that easy. <laughs> oh, that you could have brought bonnets on yeah, the show. We, us three oh. could have worn them. But the thing is that they, what they love to do is put on a, you know, costume. a costume, preferably a lingerie based, <laughs> yes. you know, I'm a dirty angel, but right. like you're just in a thong. And now we're going to play a game. You know, which is basically no matter what the game is called, it's who at the table do you wish death on. <laughs> exactly. Which is what they said. They said, we have a, before we talk about, you know, getting our friendship stronger and moving on. <laughs> um, I have a real fun game. Fun says Heather Gay. Um, you know, back in the olden days when the Mormons <laughs> were shaking the butter to jerking off the, the cream <laughs> to make a butter, they had to go in these wagons to go and settle in another state. And it was snowy and it was the 1800s. So we're going to talk about who would you like to throw off your wagon to be left in the cold and die in the woods and be eaten by wolves. Oh, wait, I'll go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to say, oh, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to pick the woman who's a thief and who stole doesn't earrings. Su- doesn't support it. And oh. doesn't support women or gay people, um, even though we're all here together. I'm sorry, Heather. I'm going to have to throw you, apparently push you off the wagon while it's moving. But that's cool. Yeah. Well, it's a game. This for fun. It's just a game. Yeah. Right? Well, even though you called me a monster, <laughs> um, <laughs> because we're filming this show together, I'm willing to move on, even though I was, you know, subsequently left in the snow to die <laughs> and eaten by coyotes in 1800s Utah. But you know what? I'm going to move on because otherwise if I talk about it anymore i'm a hysterical unhinged weirdo <laughs> right just move on right let move it, on. hey let it go let it go um so of course mon uh lisa barlow who feels like monica has had it out for her she says well it's going to be monica because you're a mean person and then monica goes into her impression which we all can do the impression so i don't think it's the greatest impression but she does a pretty good job at doing the lisa barlow where she's like oh really i love that for you <laughs> oh really and then lisa barlow goes Oh, really? If you like my voice so much, why do you keep... I guess you keep... You're obsessed with it. You keep talking about it. She's like, actually, I don't because I don't even really think it's your voice. <laughs> like, it was so sixth grade. Cringe. It was so sixth grade mm-hmm. where it was like, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? Like, it was that bad. It was up there with Kyle <laughs> Kyle and um, Sutton in Beverly Hills. Another uh, great scene uh, where uh. she's like... You know, Sutton's been drinking vodka cranberry <laughs> since 7 a.m. And even the the weird uh, butler guy is like, would you care for some tea, Sutton? Like, wink, wink. And she's like, no, I'm having a cocktail. I've had a long day. I've been up walking around this house drinking cocktails since 7. And it's exhausting putting ice in a glass. And if you can't realize how exhausting it is, maybe you aren't my friend, Kyle. Maybe you are. And then Kyle's like, well, I think you're acting like a little star. Name them. <laughs> Name them. Well, I'm trying to hear. I'll tell you. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Name them. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the. Name them. Stop em. talking. I'm Name going em. to. T- why are you Name doing that? Em. Why are you I'll doing tell that? you what. I didn't like that Erica set me up. When the elevator opened up and the dancers from Magic Mike were there. <laughs> Erica said, oh, now's your chance. Look at the dancers that you were nice to. Mm. And Kyle is just like, what the fuck? It was amazing. It was- and I posted something on my stories. I came across a TikTok where this girl is sitting with her dog. And she, the dog's able to put its hand out. And then she wrote down, when your dog um, refuses to take your answers for why you can't go to the dog park. And so she's talking to her dog and she's like, she's like, because it's raining out. And the dog, the little poodle or whatever it is, is like, was putting in a hand and they have the voiceover of, name them. Name them. She's like, because it's raining and we can't go to the, name them. 
It was so uh, funny. Um, mm, yes. Mm. So what? whose team are we on? What do you think is going on <laughs> with them? And you know about the lawsuit. Do you know about the lawsuit? Well, so no. So Monica went to Beauty Lab back. Oh, love this. Let me find it. Back in um, what year was this? I think it might have been 2019. The medical spa released screenshots from December. Okay, so she is not on the show yet. No, she's not on the show. And she the works for Jen Shaw. At, at this, this time, point. she works for Jen Shaw. Okay. Okay. And the medical spa beauty lab, which I've been to, which is a great operation and. Heather Gay is using her platform and she has a partner and they built another place. And it's like you get facial, you get facials next to each other. It's like a blowout, but for facials. I and then along with, you know, Botox like and injections. Everything. You get injections, facials, all this stuff. Okay, so the medical spa released screenshots from December 2019 to May 2020 as Monica praised their services. The star constantly and openly raved about how good the services actually were, Beauty Lab claimed. In the message from December 10th, 2019, Monica wrote, obsessed you're amazed adding two heart emojis three days later she sent reagan a photo of her face with a comment i mean so good this is important because um monica paid a little bit of money up front and i guess you could pay monthly and she never paid and it was several thousand dollars oh and so eventually the beauty lab went after her oh. and now she it's all been revealed and now monica says i I'm counter suing because the work was shoddy. I didn't look uh, good. It was bad. And that's why I'm not paying. But there's all this saying that she loved it. So um, and now the Monica's lawyer is asking for more time to collect evidence and respond to the beauty labs motion. Do we know the total bill? Is it only like two grand? No, it's like four. But it's okay, not. I mean, but still, not like that they're, they're not yeah. going to be stiffed and they probably be stiffed and they probably are like when we get stiff, this is what we do. Yeah. And, you know, and like it's probably not on Heather's. You know, Heather's running the whole thing. So she probably didn't even know. Yeah. Until I think that she didn't know until they were filming and hopefully we'll see it that one of these, you know, people that didn't pay is her co-star. I mean, I know nothing about this ins and outs. I will say, though, that Jen Shaw did famously go to Beauty Lab. Yes. And Monica worked for Jen Shaw. I did think, and this is said with all due. Yes. That Jen and Heather's some some details of their work were a little for me a little bit objectionable like i was like huh i, I would do wait I, jen and heather what what work the work on their face oh yeah i, I mean, would say probably like i would do a little bit differently me yeah, my choice if yeah. i could because i think they're both i think jen Shaw's like really pretty and i think heather is too well um, it can be temporary so the thing is like yeah if it's a little too jacked up or whatever you just let it in the go wrong out. area yeah so yeah. I think probably maybe Jen was like, come on, Monica, let's go down. And maybe Jen said she would pay for it because that does track for me for Jen. And I we love Jen Shaw, no matter how problematic she is in th- serving th- life in prison or whatever her deal is. <laughs> Here's but. the thing. I think I think when somebody struggles with money and finances, but live on their means. Yeah. That this is probably something that Monica has done in several places and several places. It's just not worth it. You know, so she didn't have the 4,000. She didn't want to pay. She yeah. couldn't. And she probably thought they're never going to figure it out. They're going to get tired or blame Jen. Yeah. And, but I, I don't I don't think the Jen thing has it. So well, gonna, I think Jen connected her there because well, she worked for Jen, but she has bad credit or her mom wouldn't own. Since we're talking about Jen. Yes. There is some scoop. As you know, she's in the same prison with Elizabeth Holmes, One Drop. Ugh. One Drop. Ugh. This One Drop can save my uncle's life. And wouldn't you want that if you could know what every disease someone had with One Drop of Blood? Um, it's really kind of great um, that we're here today. <laughs> anyway, she's back. And they're, they're, so, Jen Shaw, they're calling her Jen Fonda. In the prison. Is she doing workout? Yes, she's doing workout classes, including an ab focus class called Shamazing and offering makeup tutorials using products from the prison commissary. What are we <laughs> doing? Getting, from page we're six. getting like, like Earl Grey tea <laughs> and maybe doing there's makeup. a way to do it. And she'd become a mentor to fellow inmates, including Elizabeth Holmes. Well, I believe that because Scott Nathan, who's come on my show a few times, is a famous photographer. He said at one point, a few years ago, um, 
Someone reached out and was like, do you know a stylist that works in Northern California? Because I have this girl and she is like a Silicon executive and she needs a stylist. And it was Elizabeth Holmes. Mm. So she never had so style, good. which hence why she just copied Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs turtleneck look. And so she probably doesn't really know how to do much makeup or anything. And Shamazing is there to help. Still branding wow. Shamazing. Yes. Wow. Still branding. She spends it. a lot of time journaling. Uh, Jen Shaw and she has almost 90 pages so Ooh. far but she's got like eight years left so that's gonna be so the book a big will be book. done oh yeah in 2027 yeah which I can't imagine anyone caring but who knows um do you but, think she'll get out early they already shortened it a little bit but I don't think when it's uh federal I think no she's got to do like at least five, six years. She has to. There's no way she's going to be out in like two and a half. There's no, no way is my understanding. But, you know, I don't know everything. Um, here I am with Kyle. She looks nice. thin. We both have the similar bags. The you cult. both look thin. Yeah, you both look thin. The, um, and was she looked, her girlfriend, I mean, friend there? Um, Morgan Wade was <laughs> not there. Mm. Um, I did talk to her because I said, you know, I saw you um, over the weekend with Morgan on a walk and but she's but I'm like she goes I've seen you out there before I'm like um, I'm like I don't belong in your community I belong in another community but um, I was at a golf cart and I didn't want to bother you and you know sh she was recovering Morgan was recovering from she had the, the one of this different gene for breast cancer oh the Brockta yes. Hampton or whatever it's so called. she was able to do that and that's going to be all part of the documentary oh, that shit. Kyle is producing and is part of along with her music and everything. And I do think it's going to be like a really important message of getting people aware and tested and all that stuff. So, um, so that was that. Was Chris Jenner But she there? was very nice. No, Chris Jenner was not there. Were any of the Kardashians there? No. Mm, that's a bummer. And oh, I only saw Nikki Hilton. I did not see Paris. But Paris has a two-day-old baby or whatever. Yeah. So, no. um, so anyway... She looked great and she Did was nice. Did you guys have a nice vibe? Was it fake? Kyle? Yeah. Oh, no. Kyle reached out to me. She's like, Heather. And then oh, we okay. chatted a little. Okay. And then, because she's funny. Like, when I, like, I tagged her about the, with the dog and the person name. And, like, <laughs> she'll see that and, like, laugh or repost it. Like, she has a good sense of humor about the craziness of things. But Kathy recently in another interview asked, being asked about her sister's struggle with Mauricio she said, I was very shocked. I found out when everybody else did, but I can't imagine that Kyle would go this far in the separation if she wasn't serious about, I believe, it being a true ending. Was Kim there? Kim who? Richards. Yes. Kim Richards was there, and I'm so bummed I did not get to talk to her, but She's she glowing. was she has her just grandkids. jumping, running around and being like funny, but I, I, I remember it was so much, it was like, Sensory overload of like, who do I talk to and when? And then I also want to get a photo. And it was just, oh. but it was super fun. And everybody was like, really cool and in, in a great vibe. It was and great. was Rick Hilton there? Because he's giving Hugh Hefner thin, <laughs> handsome vibes <laughs> lately. Rick is killing the game. If Rick was there, I did not see him. But, you know, like I said, it was several, there was outside, there was downstairs, there was the front level. There was like a lot of places. So I did. And I saw Larsa Pippen on the red carpet with her boyfriend, Marcus. And I wanted to. And, and Gertie was there from Miami. Gertie was there and I didn't get a wow. chance to her. Was she bald? Her. Yes. She looked great. And then um, Larsa was like, oh, hi. And I wanted to talk to her because I've never talked to her. Maybe I've talked to her many years ago in the Kardashian days, but I didn't get a chance. But she looked great. She was with the boyfriend and, you know, so let's see good. if so there's good. anything else. Love them. Meanwhile, who was not invited was oh Kim Zolciak, <laughs> who got a lot of shit yesterday. Um, this site, uh, Instagram post, this Instagram is called The Good, The Bad, and The Fake Six. This, they basically dedicate their life to... <laughs> fake news? No, Kim Zolciak and her fake news, oh. okay? <laughs> But TMZ reported on this as well. So one thing that uh, Kim does, but many other housewives do this. Uh, Vicky, Tamara, I'm just going to say it. They do it. I don't know why they should. I mean, I've been offered to do it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. They give, they, you give them access to your Facebook or whatever, and they will come up with these story headlines that are 100% click 
clickbait. So it'll show like a picture of like Teresa and Louie and they'll be like, it's over. And with like an X between them. And then you go to it and it's like, it's over. They finished redoing their jacuzzi spa. <laughs> like it's oh, like no. literally that. But then you get the ad. I mean, it's never what you think it is. And it's mm -mm. like, so <laughs> she's done this. Kim has done I'm going to be a grandma like seven times. And sometimes it's a puppy's pregnant. Sometimes it's her neighbor across the street is going to. And other times it's like, when I become a grandma, I want to be called no, no or whatever. It's never that. So she did one this two days ago that was an ultrasound. No. With she and Brielle. And on the ultrasound, she put Brielle's name on there. No. And it was. Brielle's not pregnant, so she doctored that and everything for the clickbait. And then it was just, when I become a grandma, this is what I would like. Mm. This embryo. Yeah. I mean. Inside. So just, everyone's just like, this is just. And then they're like, you know, she has a serious boyfriend, Brielle. And they're like, think about, some of the comments are so funny. They're thinking about like, you know, people tagging or trying to find, you know, Brielle's boyfriend and his family being like, congrats. And, you know, it's just like. Uh, and then so she and needs then, the money so bad and mm -hmm. is it good money i don't know but i mean it's just it's just a clickbaity thing i mean people are on to it now it's just like not uh, why anybody uh. would ever think that she has the scoop <clears throat> over tmz or something about somebody getting divorced or breaking up or dying she's never gonna have it you don't need to click on it <laughs> neither does vicky neither does Tamara. like it's no. just just whatever. But, you know, you gotta. they got to make their money, whatever. But I just, it, it, it doesn't hurt you. You click on it. It's not like all of a sudden by clicking on it, they they shut down your bank account. It's just you've <laughs> wasted a couple of minutes. Right. That's it. So it's not, it's a, it's not a crime. It's just kind of like, yeah. ah, I don't I think you need to do it, ladies. Stuff. I just don't think I it. always fall for it. It's like, yes, of course I want to see what Shiloh looks like now. Yeah. And then I never get to. <laughs> I never, ever get to. I want to see what all of Angelina's kids look like. Or no, she never. falls for like this new prehistoric animal they yeah, discovered. They discovered. Yeah. Nope. It was nothing. It was right. just like we built, we, we, we excavated the parking lot <laughs> yes. and found a bone. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I always fall for it. Always. And it's always, or pictures of whatever. It, I can't ever see well, what the kids look like. And also, <clears throat> who's thin now? <laughs> yeah. No one's thin. No one's thin. <laughs> and and this site, you know, the, really this Instagram, um, whatever, po what Instagram account, the the good, bad, and the fake six. They really like have like archived stuff that she's done that's just irked them. Okay, <laughs> and so they are like, look, this was her last Christmas, and they have her. I guess now defunct podcast. I can't imagine that they still have a podcast. Though, if they got on their podcast and fucking talked about their fighting, calling the cops all the time and losing their, 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 they like, just like I said, if you brought the cameras and showed that documentary style, second part of Queen of Versailles movie, like document, like let's see the, like then I think people would really pay a lot to see that. But anyway, they showed, she showed them the audio of them talking. She and Corey about like, oh, we're going to give to this charity and blah, 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 blah. I don't know if they ever gave, but then they show them Christmas morning, every gift wrapped to the nines, which are, you, I'm sure she had to hire people to do that. And each of the six kids literally has 80 gifts each. It is so gross. And I'm like, and, and then to show it all, like I just, even if, listen to me, people, if you're listening to Juice Scoop, everyone has an Instagram account, show your tree and stuff. But if you really are, that blessed <laughs> show a car if you got a car you got your wife a car like i think that's fine but the 75 Excessive gifts gluttonous. for each child it's like just keep it we don't need to see it like it's not going to help it's not going to make us like you anymore even though you might get a lot of likes the long run is if you end up like kim and croy that's out there forever and people are going to be like you're gross i, I only want to see someone be like um, I went into massive debt for this, <laughs> but this is how much I love my wife and here's the car or something. Yeah, yeah. Click. I like you. Yeah. But I don't want to see, you know, a, a huge whole hot family like Tom Brady and Giselle and both of their new boyfriends and girlfriends and all their gorgeous kids. And they're all in matching onesies and they're like counting their money. And I'm like, no, that makes me feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just want to see 
people being like, well, I'm hiding in the pantry because my mom's on my nerves or whatever. <laughs> like, that, like it's me like hiding from my whole family. Yeah, I wish I, I was care. drinking. I didn't yeah. care how much it cost, but I finally made the first payment of like, half of this Mazda. <laughs> Wait, Brian, <laughs> are, you, are you an aunt? Yes, I am. Oh yeah, my yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah. I have the gift for you. Okay. I just came across it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ca- it's a candle that's called the ant candle. Yeah. And it like it <laughs> smells like vodka and family yes. gossip. Yes. <laughs> yes. Literally, I'm that person. <laughs> that is so it's funny. Like, why is Aunt Brandy drunk already? <laughs> I'm you know, I'm hiding like what kids? And I'm drinking like my mom's like cooking wine. <laughs> cooking wine. Yeah. It's not um, for drinking. Here at the Christmas party, here are two of the top realtors of Selling Sunset. And while they are taking a photo, it's uh, Emma and the one that's married that had the baby with um, Nick Cannon. Brie? Is selling this from the regular Selling Sunset? They they're, they're the LA su- Selling Sunset. Oh, okay. Girls. So anyway, while they're ta- first before Kathy joined in, they were taking really hot photos together that were just like stunning, honestly. And I got in there and I go... Girls, hi, I'm looking for a four bedroom, three bath in the Hollywood Hills. My budget is 400,000. Can you help me? And they're like dying laughing. And I'm like, can you run some cops? Do you guys do rentals? Is this what you're going to wear to the open house? Yeah, that's the meme. <laughs> to me, that is the meme of 2023. If anyone can find it. And the tiny purse. A lot of realtors are like, it's not even the sexy outfits. It's that as a realtor, your purse is like, couldn't even hold one key to get yeah. into the house. <laughs> no. It has like a lip gloss in it. It doesn't even have yeah. your iPhone. They're in pasties and like a bathing suit bottom. And they're at the open house. That That's the best meme. I'm, I'm wearing curious. wrapping. And then, the, and then the one girl, um, she showed up at one of the listings or whatever on the show, and she took a Chanel basketball and just made it a purse, but it you it didn't open. So she was just walking around with a Chanel basketball wrapped around a chain just for looks. As she's And also it gives me anxiety because they always go out, all the houses are running, they always have these teak decks, and they have these spiky heels. And I'm like, your heel is going to fall in the slit. <laughs> yeah, in the slit. And then you're going to fall over the oh, mountain. <laughs> We're all imagining falling. I mean, I do want to say that Kathy Hilton looks really cute. Mm-hmm. She looks so cute. I mean, she looks great. Her legs are her, her, tight. Her, her body is, cute. is gorgeous. Her hair yeah. is good. She looks really good. Um, okay, so this was Emma's post about when the, when G Flip and Chriselle got married. Do you know that they're married now? I, I didn't realize they got married. And I just wanted. Uh, I saved this topic for Julie because I like her Australian accent. You have to make sure Julie but understands. G-Flip, I'm not a lesbian. What's Tell okay, her what's going on. Okay, G Flip is a lesbian who goes by they them pronouns, and she's a singer in Australia, I'm and sure she's 27. Yep. Yes, and she and Chriselle fell in love, and now they're married. Mm. Chriselle from Selling Sunset, who was married to the This Is Us guy, and they got divorced. Anyway, Chriselle. She said, loves my Australian accent and is always mimicking me. And around three times a day, she'll laugh at something I've said. I think my accent helped charm her, they added. Earlier this month, G Flip also revealed that they're planning to have kids with Chriselle. Wow. I mean, the Australian so, accent is a delight. So I would hey like guys, to hear you go down on you. Hey, I, Heather. I, I, Heather. I, I'm going to be Chriselle. <laughs> All right. And you're going to be the uh, G Flip when we All meet. All right. All right. Hey, darling. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm so happy to be here and meet you, G Flip. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's, it's completely my pleasure. Uh, what are you doing later? Well, I'm supposed to show a house, mm. but it's actually fake for the show because I don't have any listings. <laughs> but um, so I just need to put on a bikini and heels before the client arrives. <laughs> that sounds perfect. <laughs> I'd love to go to that house opening oh. if you don't mind. Maybe we could uh, go up to the deek and <laughs> have some shrimps on the barbie or talk about lesbian stuff. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you were a lesbian. That's you just, didn't? That's an interest of mine. All right. <laughs> is, that, is that an interest of yours? It is. It, it's an interest of mine as well as, well as music. And you're a musician. so I, I am both and, of those. Yeah. And Australia, too, is an interest of mine. I've, I've never all three, been. All three. All three. Do you want to go to Australia? I would. And Could I eat your box? Some music <laughs> and do lesbian stuff? I would. All right, let's sh- shut it down. That's how they fell in love and they got married. Did and- Kyle, though, I mean, it begs the question. Yes. Because Chriselle, I find 
really, really pretty. Gorgeous. And it was I the love only thing that even kept me watching the dumbass It's her cute show. ass face. Yeah, I'd be like, this girl's pretty. I'm just going to stay in yeah. here. I love her face. I thought she was with one of the Oppenheimer guys. Was she not? She was. Oh, okay. I thought okay, you said so, this is us. So if... If there is a, if you were to look up someone who doesn't have a type in the dictionary, such an old, <laughs> like Webster, very popular to say that, yeah. it would be Chriselle because she was married to the tall blonde guy from This Is Us. Who's hot. Who's really hot. They got divorced while on the show. She then mm. was on Nancy with the Stars and I believe got with one of the dancers who was a black guy. Okay. She then got together with one of the tiny twins who runs Oppenheimer, Jason who was shorter than her and everything else. And they seemed very in love and all this. And now she's with a non-binary Australian right. lesbian who's 10 years younger than she. When I did consult the Webster's so that- Dictionary for the person without a type, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what I came up um, predominantly, and I did look in many, and even I looked in an encyclopedia. Oh, and wow. I think we know what it is. What is it? Gold, gold digger. digger. You think she's a gold digger? Yeah. <laughs> good. That's such good acting. Um, yeah, I do. Because I don't even think the Oppenheimer guys are like, I don't even think they're that. I think they're kind of cute. Like, I, I don't think they're. I totally disagree. I think she's doing fine. I think she's doing really well as both an influencer and a fake realtor and on the show. <laughs> and I don't think she would. I don't think she would get married and be with G Flip if there wasn't something there is a real love. Will oh, they stay oh, together sure. forever? Who the fuck knows? But I do think they really are committed and love each other. And I don't think it's because G Flip is rolling in it. Well, I think every she's an opportunist. And I'll say not that I have a problem with that. But I do think she's a gold digger because All I right. think the Oppenheimer guy was a uh, means to an end. She's like one of those really beautiful supermodels who then has to go marry like a geriatric man who runs like, you know, Gucci she doesn't have the longevity. I don't know if her 401k for Dancing with the Stars is going to, you know, come through. Well, I I think it's the girl that whoever shows real interest in her, then she falls for that person. G Flip might be, you know, a sensation. I think down G, under. G, Flip, G Flip plays all this in, all these instruments, writes her own music and sings. I think she could be a big hit. I've seen some of her performing and I think she's really good. She might be rich. I, I think Kyle saw this and was like, oh my God, she probably looked up to Chriselle because she's so beautiful. And yeah. was like, look at her. She's with this tattooed, you know, fucking dyke or whatever. <laughs> and then she's like, I want to find my own tattooed fucking dyke. And that's what Kyle did. Well, <laughs> you, who knows? You have. I do think I have said that the Oppenheimer guys could be a little could be a little peeve that maybe a lot that's happened on Beverly Hills and Kyle's life has copied them because they now have their own reality show with her daughters and her hus- former husband or ex husband to be called Buying Beverly Hills. So they have a show about hot, pretty realtors, and then she has a very close friend. A very, you know, she said my friend to me. She said my friend. Yeah. So we just believe it. Also, you know, I know you and Chris discussed the the lesbian power walking. I yeah. do want everyone to know that when we stayed at your beautiful home. Yes. Um, in La Quinta. Yes. Um, Julie and I did a Patreon and you and Liz and your sister. Yes. Did go on a lesbian power walk. <laughs> I don't think power walks are lesbian at all. Through the golf course. I think that is it was a through way- a golf course. I, I- <laughs> so you know what? I'm not s- obviously Shannon. I think that's one like- way to get your ass out is if you could talk with a friend. But I think it's so funny that people think that is something that's like amazing. And Julie and I are in a bed together, just doing a Patreon. But well, we a, did but the lesbian. You, power you guys were doing the lesbian. And power you guys walk. opted yeah. out. <laughs> As heteros. We're like, yeah. that's way too gay for us. <laughs> we'll stay in bed. <laughs> Together. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, anyway, <laughs> speaking of which, also at the party was this cute girl from Selling Sunset OC named Kayla. And she said, when you talk, you one time talked about the show and you said I would be with an old rich guy from OC. And I go, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just talking. She goes, no, I want your prediction to come true. Where is he? <laughs> but she's doing, she's she's really cute and she's doing well. And so that show's coming back too. I mean, I heard Selling Sunset OC is like the business. Selling I- Sunset OC is just, it's just aesthetically just, 
The same drama? reason why I love watching OC Real Housewives. I just, if it's a gloomy day in the valley or if it's just rainy or whatever, I just like to get in my bed and just watch all that beautiful ocean mm. and perfect faces and perfect bodies. And that's what I like about it. And good for that. I heard it's really good. Telling Sunset OC. Oh, here. Let me see. Okay. Um, did you hear about this Real Housewives of Potomac scoop? No. Oh my God, this is amazing. So Candace <laughs> and her husband, Chris. Candace is black. Chris is white. They've been married a few years. He's divorced with some kids. They, I think they're trying to have kids. Candace likes to sing. This is Real Housewives of Potomac. <clears throat> On last year's episode, there was this girl that I personally don't find attractive okay <laughs> she reminded me of when jamie fox played a character on in loving color where jamie fox's character was a girl that was shenanay was thought she was the hottest thing to walk into a room and had incredible confidence but to the average eye not your typical beauty okay so this girl shows up and she's like Chris was hitting on me and everything. And the editors show the fact that Chris is absolutely not hitting on this girl. Okay. <laughs> and then Giselle is like, he wanted to talk to me alone in my room during the um, reunion. And it made me very uncomfortable. I think he was hitting on me. And he's like, what? And then another girl goes, well, he texted me after I posted that I went to a bar in the town and didn't text Ashley. it. And she did a story. Of like, hey, out at, you know, Jones's restaurant. And then he saw that and he said, you should have come to my place. He replied to the story. He like replied to the story like, you should have come to my place because I'd like to get as many high profile people here. Like, come to my place next time you have a girl's night. That's how I interpreted it. It's 2.30 in the morning. He's coming down from working. We're all right. up after we do stand up at 2.30 in the morning. And you're like writing people. It's not like you're like, uh -uh, you know, making yeah. butter out of your day. Okay. <laughs> like, so uh, I really felt for them. I met them briefly at BravoCon last the year before. Totally nice. But still, I kind of felt for this. So then another person comes up. I dated Chris. Uh, he paid for an abortion. It all comes out. It's absolutely horrible. Now the woman is saying... I lied. I never met Chris Ugh. Bassett. I never talked to him. I made the whole thing up. I'm sorry that my actions hurt people. Now, that should be the end of it, right? But still, there's these fans that are like, mm, did they get to her? Did they threaten her? No. If she's saying she lied, accept that she said she lied and stop going after these people when there's no evidence of it. And when the one person was the evidence and she said she lied, like, that's it. Like, Why God. did she come back and say she lied? Because I think she did lie. And maybe they were maybe they were like going to sue her. Yeah. I mean, she's saying I have receipts from getting an abortion and everything, which she didn't have. And it's like, God, you know, we're on this show. But God, I don't think we deserve to like have this bullshit happen. Like I was yeah. just like, God. So team Chris and Candace on this one. This was like. Well, I just need to say, <laughs> yes, I'm not really into Chris. OK, I'm um, sorry. Um I kind of am. I like we that he like, cooks. Well, we like Giselle, and yeah. they don't like Giselle. Yeah. Oh. And I, and I yeah. do want to say that I do okay. feel that when Giselle was describing what happened with Chris, okay. she did use words such as, I felt uncomfortable. Okay. I asked him to not please be in here. I don't want the, the way it looks is never good for me. And I just had this feeling with him, and I felt uncomfortable. She never said he hit on me. She never said he tried anything. True, true. She just true said... The that she felt look bad. Like, that I don't it would be bad. And I don't yeah. want to be a part of that because it's she's used to all these guys constantly and she just didn't want to, whatever. So I was like, okay, I think that's fair. But that's I also fair. think in a guy's defense, it's like that sometimes they don't, some guys are really conscious of it. Like, you know, there's Keanu Reeves will take a million pictures and never even, he does this fake hand on your back. He knows never to touch into his back. And people that have been around, they learn that. But yeah. these people were never stars. He's a chef. He just, so it's like he's just m moving on what he's like, literally, like I said, if you're looking, I talk about consultants and coaches. I will uh, do free consulting for any new housewife and their husband. Come, we'll have dinner with you. I will give you all the tips. I will show you how to take a photo with fans. I will tell you what to do when you get a DM as a husband. Yes. Uh, what to say, <laughs> yeah. what to have a standard saying. I don't know who you are. Please don't DM me. me like. To shut it down because all these people, all these little ants and rodents yep. are just trying to like 
get something going. And it's a very different environment than it was when someone would join Real Housewives 10 years ago. Yeah. And they literally need like a coach or a consultant to get them do. through it. And like, I think you're do. I think you're a hundred percent right about him. Yeah. That thing with Ashley, he replied to the story. Yeah. I do think that he took an attitude of like uh, he had a very arrogant attitude, right. which was off putting where, rather than being like, oh, like it looks worse than it is or being even just a little bit humble because Candace and him, they one thing they aren't is humble. We do right. like them. We think they're funny. Yeah. I think Giselle used that as a storyline. Yeah. By saying I got uncomfortable and I think Candace felt you could tell she felt very betrayed. Yeah. And that sucked. And I felt bad for her. But I'm not here for talking about, okay, neck, okay, ankles. Right. I think Candace copied Nini. You're not original. That's you did, right. I don't like this physical not, mean thing. That's not yeah. cool at all. No, because and they're, I, all, they're all so gorgeous. And you know yeah. what? That's one thing Monica was saying about Lisa. She's like, oh, you're 50. Yep. You're wrinkly. And it's like, we're all going to be there, bitch. It's the dumbest thing to say. Yeah. And I like, I really think anyone that goes for those insults, like, yeah. physically, the audience isn't for you. And for Candace to do it when she's clearly imitating Nini, who's the queen of that, yeah. I thought was derivative and also rude. And it's like Giselle is like literally one of the most beautiful human Gorgeous. beings ever created on the planet. And she never. And that's the whole thing with her is that's her whole thing, her whole life. That's why she's like, I don't want to be in the room with anyone else's husband. Right. Now, she You're right. She's she probably pretty since she was 12. And, and like, she didn't want to make it. A, she, yeah. But she made it a storyline. And that sucked. But and I sucked will. I will say I 100 percent do not believe that Giselle and this guy from Winterhouse are fucking. I you think don't? that is the fakest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why? Because I just don't believe it. I think it's a very convenient thing. I think they met. Because she needs and a I think boyfriend she, on the show. She needs a boyfriend on the show. And I think she wants to show that she's got a, you know, got a dude. Because she is so hot, but she doesn't have somebody. Because it is really hard to date when you're on a fucking show, ask Ramona Singer. And so <laughs> that's why she's finally got a boyfriend now that she's off the show. It's like, and I think that they met and he wants to stay in the limelight. At one point, I think he dated Lindsay or something from Summer House. And, and so I just felt that scene of them cooking felt so <laughs> fake, no chemistry. Yeah. And I even feel like the daughter had to be in on it, which is like, guys, yeah, get poor. a room. Yeah. Wait, what was the line, mom? <laughs> get, get a room, mom. <laughs> like, it just felt so bad. And then, he, and then she's like, remember when you made me salmon that last time <laughs> that we were together? <laughs> Because we have a long distance relationship, which is also super convenient that you're in New York and I'm in D.C. because we can't yeah. be spending the night, but like come and film the seat like a hundred percent. I don't believe it, but there's no proof that to it. I'm just like, I personally don't believe it. I think they're friends and I think they came up with this and I don't think it's because neither of them find each other attractive. I just think they kind of came up with this and are like, we're taking it to the grave. We'll well, I would agree we'll break up in a few months with you because your instincts are on. Yeah. However, I would only agree with it if he was in the closet. Okay. Because first of all, well, no, I mean, I didn't want to say that. No but human, I do think that. Too. Yeah. No human living man would not like if she's like, "Yo, let's like pretend we're in a relationship." He's like, "Okay, well, only if I bone down with you in the next five minutes and for the next <laughs> six months." He would want to do it with her. So maybe he's in the closet. Then I go, "Okay, it's an agreement." But also, maybe she's somebody that doesn't want to have sex with someone that's not really her boyfriend. So like, like I don't know that if I was in her position and I'm single or whatever, and even there, this young guy, I I don't think I'd be like, "Well." Well, would you like rather I, pretend you were in a relationship I or might. have sex with a young guy? Well, I'm just saying, I don't know that I would, I don't know that I'd want to like force a guy to have sex with me so that he could get another spot on Summer House or whatever. Like, I'm just saying like, I don't know that I would. Well, it wouldn't be forced. Ha, who knows? I just think I wouldn't. Yeah. I could see myself if I was in that position. I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. No, it isn't. To go, we met, because she said we met at my live show and then we really hit it off. So I think, yeah, they met and they hit it off. And maybe they did make out or something. And then maybe she was like, and he maybe he was like, this isn't totally. For, and she's like, I know, I don't feel like our chemistry is on. <laughs> but what about this? Okay. Could we just kind yeah. of pretend like there's something going on? You get to be on the show. We'll do some scenes together. And kind of like Morgan and I Wade. And I, don't and, have, Kyle. and I don't have all the other housewives saying like, <laughs> I can't get a man. Yeah. You know? That tracks. 
Because as gorgeous as she is, it's going to be hard to get a guy who's 50 and hot and good looking. I mean, there's only so many Louis in the world and Teresa got one. Mm -hmm. There's only so many guys that are like fit, cute, have money, and, you know, and can like sweep you off your feet. And you do have to deal with a certain amount at that level of going, this person is an opportunist right. and you have to be okay with that. And it is okay sometimes. The only way to go is if you find someone like that, which is very hard to find men like that over 50, that, you know, and then everybody scroops up their past and their ex-wives mm. and the restraining orders and everything. Or you got to go for a, <laughs> hotter, a hotter, younger guy. Yeah. There's no in between. Yeah. But do you think the Morgan Wade and Kyle thing is... They're saying they're friends, but is that also an agreement? Or did they have a little like a flirtation and then it was like, let's just play this out just for fun? I, I think it could be all three. I think it could be completely just platonic friends and she took an interest in her and her art and was like, <laughs> saw an opportunity for herself to do, be a documentarian and also shed light on this like breast cancer gene because her mom died of it and all that. And then I think there could be um, more deeper, totally. And it could last forever or it could be or there. Let me ask you as a lesbian. Yes. OK, because it seems like a lot of gay men <laughs> mm -hmm. um, can have romance or be in a relationship and they can remain friends after. They are men. Yes. Yes. Now, I see it, the opposite with lesbians. Well, imagine you're just a woman. Yes. Whether you're non-binary or whatever, but you're a woman and you... Now, a woman in general, straight woman, gay woman, whatever, a woman. Yes. And just doesn't. Do you stay friends with your exes? Do you right. stay? Do you was. Do, no, well, I mean, we you, don't do that. And also when you break up with your, um, you know, that whole thing of like the Roman emperor, empire thing where people ask men, how often do you think about the Roman empire? They yeah. go every day. I saw a video where someone said, how often do you think the guy walks in? And the, the thing on the video said, I think we figured out what the female version of the Roman Empire is. And the guy walks in. He goes, how often do you think about your ex best friend to the girl? Mm. And the comments went right. And I'm like, I can relate to that. We may never we we can't be friends again. Yeah. But I think about it all the time. But we're not like and I feel like guys gay or straight. Many of them, even if they had a relationship, can be cool with each other after. Because they have no because, feelings. Because they're guys. Yeah. yeah. I think because that's they fair. don't have I do the think same that's way of emotions yeah. as we do. It's completely right. different. Completely you different. Know? Though I do want to say, I do think about the Roman Empire every day. <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> it does not think about ex-best friends. I don't think but about ex-best friends. And then I make myself or not think yeah. about them because I'll be like this. I don't want to like run into them on the street. Because, you know, if you think about it too much. Yeah. You'll accidentally manifest them. Right. You know, like at Gelson's. So I'll be like, don't think about it. Interesting. It's weird how girls do that. Yeah. It is really weird. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, did you hear about the streaker at Disneyland? He went into It's a Small World. <laughs> and he, you see him here. He's got his underwear on. But he did get completely naked. And they had to take him out. He supposedly was on some drugs or something. It's shocking. And, um, <laughs> and. All I want to say, and he's like touching all the little people. And like recently I've been to touching all the little people. <laughs> you know, all the little like it's a small world after all. So he likes dropped acid right before and he you got know, on the, the boat. Th the thing about the small world now when I go in it, and I hope they never change it. Ever. Because it has to be the way it was when I was little. It literally looks like a stage production at St. Mel's Catholic Church for the fourth grade. <laughs> like it is like the, it's like literally cardboards from Michael's is like sitting yeah. up there. And all the little people, whether they're from Japan or whatever, yeah. have the same <laughs> face. But if they're from Africa, they're black or brown. And then if they're from China, like they just have like a little Chinese outfit. Like it is not. <laughs> no, it's the same face. It's like it's an Eskimo. Same, it's yeah, a thing. Yeah. It's like. And they're so cute and everything. Anyway, he got in there. I I don't thank God he didn't. I don't think he did anything with the people around the world. Mm. But the people like are mm. filming it. Mm. And they, it just did not give adult Disney people a great reputation. 
Oh, yeah. The Disney gays. Yeah. I mean, like, the thing is, is it could have been fine. And I was actually kind of here for it because the level that I want to get out. On during totally. The, uh, like, You've always been, like, so curious. Just like, like I've got to get nothing like out. being in the log jammer or the Pirates of the Caribbean. And you're like, one day I'm going to have the I'm nerve gonna to do it. Around. One day I'm going to do <laughs> it. And I'm going to find out. And like, sometimes I'll go like that. Yeah. And I'll just, like, touch a leaf and be like, touched it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, <laughs> like, something about cool. it. And But he, the fact that he had to take his underwear off yeah that's when he went too far you know when, nobody needs to see you know his when people jangling <laughs> right amongst you know it's the, a small the, world the, all right the, like you know thing in like I know, Denmark they're, little kids. The, <laughs> they're all little the children thing. that are doing the dancing from around the world yeah, the little kids. dolls are children yeah we don't what need drug your dick involved need to take his dick out because I can I see don't know. being I mean, ecstasy do you guys think it's, do you think it's acid they didn't say what drug it, like, they just said they said um, streaking fully nude. He'd get to get fully nude mm. in the water, <laughs> uh, in, the in the canals water. near the entrance to the ride. People were screaming, please stop, sit down. Stop. Um, <laughs> He ended up walking into the water and started drinking the water and ran off oh, towards. That's the gross not part. Not drinking the water oh, and no. toward the entrance. Can't you just of the smell it? How it and smells in there. I can. So smell he it. was he was carried away by police and uh, oh, hogtied and co- wall completely nude. He was hogtied. And I just want to you know, say, by this, the way, wait, that's not disturbing. They did attempt to, to try to um, cover him with a blanket and carried him through the park, but to no avail. Hogtied. Someone's like, look at the parade, mommy. <laughs> it's like a hogtied man. I don't know why we. And I've never gotten to go to this in Disneyland, so I'm dying to go. Wait, you've never gone to It's a Small World in Disneyland? No. So you I've probably only been to Disney, Disney World. World. I only Disney World once when I was uh, a kid. Disneyland once Disney as an World. adult or twice. Okay. But so I'm dying to go. But but I but whenever this stuff happens, why can't we get, be there? We never get to be there for these It's things. the cloud chase of the century. If you're like, why? I was there during the dick guy. Oh, I yeah. saw Are you him. kidding? If you were <laughs> right. there, I would have lost my mind. Like we're there we with were you there. and Brandon and Drake and Peter. And we see and that. We're like, we like, you oh know, my God. Um, you know when people say like, I knew I was gay when like whatever I was attracted to. There's certain things in my childhood when I knew I was straight. Like I realized like <laughs> moments. Were, and it was Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm. When, and this is going to be disturbing for a lot of people. It's when they've changed it, but it was when I know the pirate one. was chasing the the, the bride. wenches around the oh the bride the, yeah around the thing like that I it's thought like, in a circle. like I thought it was hot like I was like <laughs> I'd like to be desired like that <laughs> oh. then they changed it to a fat bride chasing the guys and then they said well that's fucked up because it's like nobody wants a fat woman to catch them and now I think it's just like dogs or something i don't know they changed it they completely changed it there was also one where it was a guy's chasing like you know wonderful sex workers around uh it was like wenches like chasing as well as the bride and then there's other ones yeah that's what i liked yeah yeah you're like i'm getting hot yeah i like to chase me around the barrel (laughs) i know pirates of the caribbean was sexy like yeah back in the day it's completely changed now even the dirty drunk alcoholic guys i thought were kind of like yeah, and the, you know what I love the most? The treasure, which was at the end. <laughs> yeah. And now it's at the beginning. And it bothers me so bad. They made that be big, gorgeous treasure. Yeah. It's at the very beginning. And I'm oh. like, all you get at the end is Johnny Depp. Well, that's they how I knew I was it. gay because I wanted to be <laughs> the pirates. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the drunken pirate. Yeah. Well, you kind of are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe we'll we should. See, we all next next Hall- fulfilled our destiny. Next Halloween, I'll go as the treasure. Okay. Heather can go as the bride. <laughs> yeah. And you go as the pirate. Okay. Yeah. It's a dream come true. Um, did you hear about this cruise, what happened? No. So this cruise, it was a three-year world cruise. Oh, wow. And people paid. And based on their cabin, some people paid up to $300,000 to be on this three-year long cruise. And two weeks before... The sale that was supposed to happen between this one cruise company buying this ship that would do the three-year didn't happen. And so the cruise is off, but these people already paid all this money up front. And many people got rid of their homes or their Uh. apartments knowing that they'd be on a boat for three years. Uh. And they found out two weeks before. Was it a grift? 
Like, do they, they get, get their, their money, money back? back? Yeah. They're, I mean, they say, but it's not going to be right away. So it was like Life at Sea Cruises. They canceled it. Three-year-long cruise. It was supposed to depart November 30th. Oh. Visiting seven continents, 135 countries, and 375 ports. Wow. Passengers who had planned for this extraordinary journey received the cancellation news less than two weeks before departure. The cruise company cited financial issues, including a failed ship purchase, as the reason for the cancellation. It's they like didn't that, even have the ship. It's like that music festival. Fire. Yeah, Fire Island I mean, or whatever. Fire. <laughs> Fire Island Festival. I mean, that is that is fucked. This up. person said, "I had up. the next three years of my life planned oh, to live man. an extraordinary life, oh. and now I have nothing." And that is really sucking because a lot of people are now. There's been also reports where, like, um, you could, it's you're better off going on a cruise ship for a year than spending a year in like a very average assisted living place. Oh, there's tons well, of Julie's people. Parents. Yeah, my parents go on a cruise twice a year, if not three times. Uh huh. And they met people on their last cruise who are basically re who retired on a cruise yeah. ship. Like if you're over. 80 let's say and you want to still have adventure in your life you can literally go yeah. and spend the rest of your money and live and die on a cruise ship because also they, Why not? the other thing I didn't realize is part of your uh, paying for the cruise is that the medical's included, it's included, I guess. So, like, if you tripped or whatever, it's yeah, okay. have, yeah, it's included. They have full medical facilities on those cruise ships. There's a morgue on their crew. <laughs> Plus, like, you get all your food, you can drink, you can work out. Yeah. You go stop at ports. You don't have to go up and down stairs if you don't want to. There's elevators. Right. I mean, for a person who's of a certain age, if you and if you, let's say, you don't have your spouse anymore or whatever, you right. have a community of people. Right. There's people to take care of you. You're never alone. I mean, it doesn't sound like a terrible way to, no. to go. Right. Except well, for it was a total for, lie. Ex ex yeah. <laughs> <laughs> except for right. that. Um, Taylor Swift, there's a Harvard course. I just talked about how everybody is like going to Harvard. Like anyone can sign up for Harvard and you don't have to have an undergraduate degree. No. You don't have to have everything. Now you can take a course at Harvard about Taylor Swift. And I have put it out there. I am telling you, I... I'm going to manifest that I will be teaching a Real Housewives <laughs> course. Maybe it can even be a little broader about reality TV. Mm. Yeah. The history of reality TV mm. and Real Housewives. I, I plan on teaching that in my 60s at USC. Great. Oh, great. So it'll be, be far enough off that kids will be like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like, what, how did it start? How did they originally cast it? What was the plan? And that is... So I, I wanted you to do to it at Harvard so you could get the honorary because you already have a degree from USC because you know they give you the honorary yes, fake thing like they give Bill I don't, Cosby. I don't, I don't. But you don't want to live there. I don't want to leave this. Harvard's more fallen off. California. Maybe UCLA. <laughs> and hopefully by the time I'm 60, we will have gotten rid of daylight savings because I hate daylight savings. Ugh. So much. You do too. I can't take it. I go to bed at 6.30 and wake up at 1.30. <laughs> yeah, That's great exactly. life. That's a great life. <laughs> We've going to the party last night. Peter was like, I'm going to need an espresso martini. I'm like, fuck yeah, it's 8.12. Yep. We are going to kill ourselves. <laughs> what are we doing out? It's been dark since four. <laughs> like, I was we, like, am I a vampire? I can't go out this late. Mm -hmm. We voted against that, though. When is it going to stop? It doesn't. Like, I don't we understand why we and vote I for things. And I feel like it, it was happen. never this dark this early, like five years ago. Like I never, so it's literally dark, dark at 3.45. It's so dark. I mean, <laughs> I start listen. getting the bed ready at 4. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> pillows, 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 yeah. getting ready. Everyone has to take their last pee and poo. Do you know why they, this is why they, they do it? This is why. Because I've researched it extensively because we voted against it here in California. Yes. It never changes. Yeah. It infuriates me. They say, particularly on the East Coast, like here in California, a lot of school kids, like public school kids, take the bus. Uh -huh. But on the East Coast, maybe a, a lot of kids like walk their parents walk them to school. Okay, so they don't want to walk their kids to school in the dark. So that's why they do it. And I'm like, I don't care. No, we need the we need the daylight hours later in right, the day. Well, yeah. I, or. <sighs> Well, why is it that Arizona just doesn't participate? They, why can't we be Arizona? Yeah, because they voted against it and then they changed it. And then it. I'm like, also because our kids play sports and stuff. So we need it to be at least dark. It cannot be dark before 6 p.m. Well, what about Ugh. kids who have p parents who have their kids in daycare who right. their kids are now walking home in the dark at yeah. after five? Well, I don't think you walk home by yourself from daycare. Like that's like for a four-year-old. That's true. But then why do they walk Hi, to I'm school? I'm checking out for the daycare I'm four. Well, you're not going to walk my ass home. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I can't be left home alone, but I can walk home alone. Well, you're still driving. Hi, I'm going. Hey, you're still driving in the dark. 
I'm gonna get my going Who to wants to be stuck now? at daycare though Till it's dark And no, now you're waiting horrific. For your mom to pick you up And you're like Sorry my mom um, has horrendous. to work Also Taylor Swift Has moved into Travis's Ultra private mansion During her wow. break From her tour I mean okay. I'm loving this Great. I'm telling you Do you think They're gonna get married up They're gonna get married Do you think I think that they are Wow. I think that this can work, you guys. All right. Well, okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> there's some Julie royal care. stuff. There's some royal news that I oh, thought was sort of in. There's this book coming out. I talked a little bit about it on what? Tuesday, and it did. there wasn't as much scoop, but now there's more. The biggest scoop is the identity of the racist royal accidentally <laughs> revealed in the Dutch edition of the bombshell book and sales abruptly halted. They're not, I guess they're never going to reveal who said the, I wonder what Archie's skin color will be like, which is what Meghan Markle said to Oprah, which is what made them go, we have to leave and set the world on fire mm -hmm. of like, we hate the royals. Uh, so um, there are some people doing research and analyzing it on TikTok or whatnot. And the consensus is allegedly it's Charles and Catherine, Prince of Wales' wife. Her oh. sister-in-law, that they are the ones who had the conversation. Now, like other King people, Charles, King Charles, the dad. Oh, okay, and oh, I always Prince, thought it was that pedophile, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. No. I always did. Who did you think but, it was? But here's the thing: we don't know. And is, is there someone that recorded it? And also, I mean, a lot of people are like, a lot of people in the comments are like, listen. I actually have red hair and married a black man and his family were like, I wonder what the kids will look like. And like, we talked about it as like an exciting thing. Like, oh my gosh, yeah, our kids are going to be gorgeous and eyes. unique. Will they yeah, they're going to be eyes. like, I wonder who they'll favor. And they were like, this wasn't, you know, families have these conversations and it isn't necessarily like, and then if the child's tanner, <laughs> then this piece of wood, it'll be living in the basement. You know, they might've just been like, oh my God, like that is a unique combination. And you know, like who knows? Yeah. But like uh, that, that's the, so anyway, that's out there. Then also um, this story came out also about the book um, is that King Charles secretly profits off assets of dead Brits because a, there's some outdated law that accesses funds intended for charity based on the estates of deceased individuals who died without a will. So they're like, he's using it. I'd know. do that. Who knows? And then also Prince William thinks that his, that Harry is brainwashed by an army of therapists and his wife. And he, he was kidnapped by a cult of psychotherapy <laughs> and his wife, Meghan Markle. That's a source told the independent that the royal family is afraid of Harry. And then I also saw that uh, uh, they're supposedly selling their $14 million Montecino mansion to move close to LA. Mm -hmm. Where do you think they're going to go? Like, <laughs> Calabasas? Houses of Beverly yeah. Hills? <laughs> Woodland Hills? I mean... Oh my God, stop. <laughs> I mean, you I'm know. sure she's trying to get on it. Well, first of all, I, I already mean, said she. they need to give Meghan Markle a cameo or even a maybe larger part in the Kim Kardashian comedy movie fifth wheel that she's doing and paula pell is writing that just throw Meg megan merkel in there oh, okay. okay secondly i do think it they should move to like got i think they gotta you know cut not have such an expensive home but even if they just got like a five six million dollar home and they can be in the valley and have a pretty nice home for five or six million dollars and they live there and they do Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think she probably doesn't want to step that in the depth, the bowels right. of, of hell of, of uh, entertainment at this point. Yeah. Really? But she I said think, she I think she it's told Andy Cohen she would never do it. Oh, she did? Yeah. I'm shocked. She was like, he's like, now you're going to do real, next stop Real Housewives. And she was like, no, and never. Oh, really? really? They said they're yeah. selling well, it. Well, I mean, it's trash. Yeah, but Spe she's the Speaking of Andy Cohen. I just saw this and I want to commend Andy Cohen. I want to compliment Andy Cohen. He recently did an interview with the Tate Tate Show and he said he has stopped showing his four-year-old Ben's face on social media. He wants to give them privacy. He's like, they didn't choose this life. His mom really pushed it. Mm. And he's like, I'll probably stop with the one-year-old Lucy soon too. Yeah, because as they're babies, they're going to change a lot. But as they get older, then you're going to start recognizing them as like... People. adult human like big human right beings. and you might yeah. you know and like yeah if the kid is like 
12 and at a mall or something. And he, did, he doesn't need a bunch of like, you know, Bravo fans coming up and being like, hi, Ben. <laughs> Right. I remember when you were four and you didn't like going to camp. <laughs> yeah. Hi, tell your daddy that what you need to do with your eczema uh, is to oh use God. just an emollient. <laughs> yep. And tell your daddy, fire Tamra. We want her off. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fucking tell pushing their agenda. I don't like it. Ben's like, can I just play basketball with my friends? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, without exactly. hearing your two cents on Vicky Gumbelson. It's uh, like, like just recently, Sarah Jessica Parker showed a photo of um, Broderick and her two, her twin daughters. And, Someone just said, Heather, stop saying two twins. I got it. Twin daughters. I don't have to say two and twins. Okay, I got to make this sick. <laughs> and the son, they were like all snuggled Will, in bed Loki. over Thanksgiving or whatever. I would never know what those kids look like mm -mm. walking around. And even with one post, I would never know. Yeah, nor would we know what Shiloh looks like now because whenever we click on it, we don't get to see. <laughs> no, but we She's do gorgeous. now. I we saw do her dancing once no, no, and no, she no, is we gorgeous. Know, we know, we know. I mean, I'll see kids on the street and go, is that fucking Shiloh Jolie Pitt? <laughs> if I see any gorgeous, beautiful, like the most beautiful child, I'm like, I think that's Shiloh. Let's go <laughs> yeah. walk over there. And then, of course, we lurk like weirdos because I'm just trying yeah. to get in her vibe. And also, I feel like the Kardashians... It, it's out of their control and there's so many of them and they oh, don't need yeah. any friends because they could all like yeah. how their camera. Friend. But for Andy, who's a single dad with two kids. Anyway, I just thought that was really yeah, good. And I'm glad good. that he's talking about it. And maybe more people will think about it in their own social media and small if there's influencers or whatever right. to be like, mm, maybe I shouldn't just throw my kid up every second. And like second. Bethany said, and you actually, he should think about it for the people that are on his show because all those little kids that are all over every housewife yeah. show, they don't have a choice except for the thirst bucket, cute, precocious actress who's Emily's daughter. daughter who wants if, to do it. Yeah. If you want to do yes. it, like, 100%. I mean, if my mom was a real housewife and I would be like, Lurking. So fucking like what? Happy. Yeah, <laughs> this is good. Mm. No, when I was a little kid, I would create characters and I would like put on a wig. There's a photo of me at two with my grandmother's wig and a pair of heels. And my dad wrote in the back of the card. He sent it to my aunt and then I, my niece said it. But whatever. My cousin got it back to me. And he was like, this Heather goes in and finds these things in the closet and comes out and surprises us. With it. Like, I just, so like, and I also used to go and I was Mrs. Hule and she was the uninvited guest for dinner. So my mom would be making dinner and I would come and I'd be like, Oh, hello. What, what do we got here? And then she'd play along. And she'd be like, um, we're just, I only have, you know, Not I only have three chicken breasts and we have a lot of kids. And I'd be like, Oh, darling, I'll just have the rice. Oh, can I sit here? And and then all the and then my mom would be like, Bob, Mrs. Hule is here. And I like, <laughs> How is Mrs. Hule? How is this the first time we're ever hearing about Mrs. Hule, the uninvited guest for dinner? The uninvited guest for dinner. She shows up. She, nobody wants her there. She, How is she not? I'll just have the rice. I'll the just time. have the rice. I'm full. Yeah. That's why I have I mean, Mrs. Hule needs to <laughs> needs to be. In, introduced People to the world. People don't understand. No, but I'm like, sorry. If I were, there were cameras on. I, mean, I would be like doing characters. Of course. I would, yeah. Just like coming in with a fur coat. Like I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. that, yeah. You know, I didn't know. Realize we had a guest yep. sober. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, think if the kids lazier. want it, the kids want it. Yeah. But when they're younger and they're just like being forced, they're to just do acting innocent. scenes. They don't. Yeah. yeah. So and I they think. Don't, yeah. Hopefully, Andy's gonna. He's gonna. He's evolving. I mean, we definitely can't deny him that. He's understanding. It's a yeah. it's like a moving ship. This this, right. this huge, huge Bravo is just a whole thing. At yeah. this point, we're getting like England where they don't ever show the kids' faces. You know how they always No. In like, you know, the sun and all that. All of oh, their babies. The stars' are, faces. Yeah. Like all the yeah, all the famous kids, they never show their face in yeah. England. It's like one of their regulations, even though they will literally follow you yeah, and bug your, your home. Right. I mean, they're like the craziest when it comes to journalism, but they really they don't show the kids. Mm, interesting. Um, okay, I'm gonna end on this. <laughs> Brittany did a lot of weird posts, you know, and she she obviously it's her way to connect with people, but because she took off the comments, I think she doesn't know, like, unless page six, which they did, like, write an article about it. Um, she doesn't know how it comes across. She doesn't know how it comes across. And, um, oh, this is this is her page. Brittany May Spears. I ask what's this next to the nails? Are those she, ducks? Two, two doves that are Irish. <laughs> yeah, like they're a flying with a, I don't with know. a laurel. <laughs> and okay. she was doing, doves flying with a laurel. She was showing her teeth a lot and a lot of conspiracy people are very 
freaked out that her teeth are not the same teeth that we saw 10, 15 years ago when she was out and about. And some people say, well, some teeth move. Some people say uh, veneers are gone. Some people say it's not even her. Oh. Who the hell knows? But, you know, some people some people are like, oh, she's just being silly and let her just have her fun. And I wasn't even going to like report on it, except that like page six and TMZ were like, this was concerning. You know, we all know she can't put an outfit together. I mean, she went to the John Robert Powers um, <laughs> modeling and fashion <laughs> etiquette school that I did. She makes every mm. mistake. She wears summer clothes. This she recently she had an off the shoulder like white top and then shorts, but then with brown like pumps. And then she'll wear like a black uh, jeweled choker that you would wear, you know, whatever out to like a fancy dinner. It just she has her own style. And yeah. She puts these outfits together and she's so she excited. Loves a choker. She's so excited to show people. And that's all she does. I don't know. The only thing I can, you know, I, I read her book and we talked about her book and then that's it. So it's like, okay, so now how do I get attention coming? Because we're not talking about her book anymore. And it's like. So she turned the comments off. They've been off for, for like a year. So how, how is she getting any feedback? She, at all? I think she just sees how many people liked it. And then does she have the comments anywhere? Twitter, nothing. So she's reading page six. She's, yeah, she has no idea what the so response the is unless she listens to Juicy Scoop. And I'm saying, <sighs> Brittany, people are concerned. I'm still around the corner. We can go on a power walk. <laughs> <laughs> we can go to Trader Joe's. We can go to Joey's. We can hang out in your backyard and watch Real Housewives. We just like have some friends and have a little bit of a schedule and... And I think we could see on this note, Heather, yes. we went to dinner. Now we, us three. Yes. I wanted to have another dinner meeting with you. Yes. But now at that first dinner meeting, I did extensive research and we went to a sushi spot where we might have run into Britney Spears. We didn't. Right. But the sushi spot was good. Yes. But I it was dead. We were literally the only people there. You no, know, but then it started <laughs> filling up, but the, it was tasty. It was totally tasty. Yeah. So you can see how people... No, I didn't go anywhere she hasn't ever been. Okay. <laughs> so now I will find another place. Okay, well, I have to tell you, there's something exciting happening that Peter's pretty thrilled about. Ruth Chris is reopening at the old TJI Friday spot on Kanoka. Oh. And so hopefully the decor will be a little more happening than the old... Ruth Chris. Ruth and Chris. Peter really likes the Ruth Chris steak. He mm. likes it hot, sizzling butter crust. And mm. you and if for some reason you got it too undercooked, they will go bring it back and it's even more delicious. It's like everything. I mean, despite the confusing name, it is a super popular steakhouse. Yes. And um she so anyway. <laughs> it's a weird name. Anyway, <laughs> Brittany can join us there. Okay. Yeah. And we can also do our meeting at another spot. You're going to be getting all the DMs now. People know where she goes. All we have to do is just run I into her. I don't think she goes out very much at all. She does, though, sometimes. She goes with weird, dubious characters, well, and they go to dinner. And we can I go up. I am available. And we can offer and power walks around the golf course. And I can just be silly fun. <laughs> I'm not going to ask her about anything. I'm not going to ask her when the next album comes out. I'm not going to ask her what's up with her kids. We're just going to talk about Juicy Scoop that's not about her. Yeah. Talk It'll about chokers. Day. <laughs> Eyebrows. Victorian dolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girls, mm. everybody loves you. And how can they get more of Brandy and Julie in their daily lives? Just go to julieandbrandy.com. We have a <laughs> podcast. We have a Patreon. You were just featured. Well, not just. Last season of Married to Medicine. Um you, of course, because you never talk about yourself and you're horrible at promotion. <laughs> yes. I did not know that you were on it until someone said you were on it. So then I started watching this season and I'm like, I watched every episode. When were you on? You were on season nine and you go and get your twat looked at by Dr. <laughs> well, Jackie. Julie went with yeah. you to Atlanta yes. for a live show. Right. Um, stand up. You yes, guys did yes. stand up. And it was your show. Julie yeah, opened, for opened you. for you. And we did a live podcast which you suggested. You're like, while you're here, you guys should do a live yeah. podcast. So we had the best time, which had tons of strip clubs. It's the strip capital of the, of the country. Right. It really is. We did a live podcast with Dr. Jackie from Marriage Medicine. And I do want to encourage, you have a ton of listeners and they like Bravo, but we never, we had never watched Married to Medicine and we, we watched it 
we binged it. It's got 10 seasons at this point. It is Bravo's like most popular and most underrated show. A lot of people have never seen it. It is really, really good. It's I mean, a lot of people watch it, but it doesn't get a lot of talking. Yeah, it's under, a lot of people, but a, like good ratings. It would got never it. make it 10 seasons if it wasn't right. hugely popular. Yeah. It's not like Housewives. It's them and their, it's women and their husbands. So right. either their husbands are in medicine or they are. Right. Except for Phaedra, who's now infiltrated, who doesn't even. I thought she date, she's dating a doctor or something. We've never Allegedly. seen them. Yeah. So but it's fine. I just saw a little bit of her and she was doing those like, well, when the pot calls the kettle hot, <laughs> it's time to sip the tea. Like a lot, like <laughs> yeah. just like these Saves. weird, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, she's nice. She's a fun addition. But mm -hmm. if you watch it from the beginning and binge it in like a weekend, it is so good. It's, Honestly, Heather, on that show, at one point, one of the most popular couples that you can't even see coming breaks up and they get back together on a reunion via Andy Cohen. And it's all real. It's it is by far like the, the realest and best show on Bravo. It's so good. It's, so we did yeah. a, a live show with Dr. Jackie um, and it was really fun in Atlanta. And then we told her at that point that we hadn't you know, gotten our coochies examined in, in years. And she was like not having that. And we flew back to Atlanta and she went inside of our vaginas. It <laughs> was, yeah, that's what you so do crazy. when you're a gynecologist. But not when you ever know someone and someone who's on TV. Mm -hmm. But it was good. It was a good, it was a good thing. You know, I mean, those yeah. things are important. Just like, important. you know, Kyle and just like Teddy is sharing yep. about her skin cancer and I said that to her I'm like how are you feeling and I'm like I think it's really it's really good that you share these things that people get tested and you know and mm -hmm. the thing that we had with on marriage and medicine was that we called the fear of finding out so instead of FOMO it's FOFA and it's like we didn't I was so scared to go I didn't want to find out you know I don't want to but we put off find out that something's wrong yeah but there you, wasn't anything wrong right no but people do put off yeah doing breast exams and yeah. mammograms and stuff so it was it was cool it was a great experience it was really fun um mm. and we do you know recommend that show it's yeah. always good to get to binge 10 seasons of anything right and really follow it you yeah. can binge 10 seasons over patreon that's right <laughs> that's right so it's <laughs> patreon.com slash Brandy and Julie. No, it's patreon.com slash dumbgaypolitics. Oh, but sorry. go to our website, Julie and Brandy. And I do want to say on the note of the Patreon, Heather, yes. that um, we do one podcast that's free. Mm -hmm. And um, the majority, like our podcasts are on Patreon. We do video and they're not political. They're not. But I do want to just point out to people who criticize Patreon, particularly whether it be, you know, you people are lucky with you because you give people like a three hours a week of free fucking content. So I don't want to hear, I don't want to see in your comments or whoever. And if any of you, the fans, see other people talking shit about Heather's Patreon, particularly, you get three hours of free content. They are so lucky that you do two free podcasts right. a week. Can you, are you kidding? And also because on this week's Friday, Patreon at, you know, patreon.com slash Juicy Scoop. I'm going to tell another story of when I got put into a private room with Kathy Hilton and Nikki Hilton. I know a lot of people probably aren't interested in that. <laughs> so if you're not interested in what went down in that surprise meeting at the end of the party, then by all means, don't sign up for my Patreon. Right. But people are lucky that how much free content you put out. They, people, I think people start to take for granted yeah. like these podcasts are free. They're, right. It's not serious, which costs $12 or whatever. This is free. You can go right and on. And also, if you don't, I will still love you. You can yeah. come to do. I get it. Not everyone can join. It's fine. That's yeah. why I do it. That's why you have the choice. You we do choice. encourage people to join ours, though, because we don't give a lot of free content. <laughs> and, and everyone loves yours and yes. loves you, too. Love you, Thank Heather. you, girls. Thank you. Real friends, we support women. <laughs> women supporting women. You know what? You know what? I support women. Okay. You know what? This reality reckoning really kind of went nowhere. It was sort of a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we have to end this. A long ass show. I don't even know if they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs>